First of all, I'd just like to thank MIP TV for staging this event and including us in the official program. Um, and before we go any further, I'd like just a quick reminder of the world of variety. Can you roll the film, please? And now I'd like to welcome on stage Jeremy Derrick, Chief Executive of Sky Group. So, Jeremy, first of all, could you just describe the DNA of Sky? Well, you know, we started out as a challenger. It's interesting today, we often have lots of, uh, you know, questions about what's going on in the market today. But of course, that was basically what we started ourselves. And I think uh, when, you, when you are a challenger, what, what forms very early is a commitment to change, to perpetually renew, get better, um, to innovate, to do new things. And so I think at its heart, Sky is a business. I'd, I'd, I'd describe it as a very sort of restless business, I think. Uh, at our heart, we're, uh, we're, uh, we have a challenger mindset. Um, we're a business that's about renewal and change. Um, and then we're a business that's architected really around three things, I think, which is, first of all, content, clearly, uh, probably the thing that Sky is most famous for with its customers. Uh, innovation, constantly being at the, the leading edge of how people consume that content. And then a brand and service that uh, customers can trust, and they know they can rely on Sky to constantly be at the forefront, uh, but also to, to service their needs uh, very, very well. So I don't know if that's a description of our DNA, but that's how I would think of Sky as a business. Thank you. And uh, around two years ago, you merged Sky in the UK and Ireland with Sky in Germany and Austria and Sky in Italy. Can you just um, talk us through the, the challenges of that, but also the benefits that it's brought you? Well, the, you know, fundamentally, what did, it, what did it come down to, bringing the skies together, I think was really two things. First and foremost, growth. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a growth business. You know, we always have been, and I think we always will be. So what, uh, what bringing the skies together allowed us to do uh, was to reset our, our horizons for growth mm -hmm. uh, and, and expose ourselves as a business to an opportunity of some 60-odd million people across Europe who are not yet paying uh, TV. So. Uh, so at its core, that was what it was about. But the second thing I think was really about capability. We can see and are in a world which is changing dramatically in terms of what we do. So bringing, I think, all of the skies together and, and bringing the best of all the skies together, I think just gives us you know, much greater capability across the organization um, to seize the opportunities that are ahead of us. And you've sort of got to believe if you have more of the best and brightest minds across Europe, that you can tap into the cultural diversity of, of Europe. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and uh, really pursue that aggressively, then uh, we're going to be better placed over the long term to deal with whatever comes our way, but to secure that opportunity for, to, to grow faster and further. Mm -hmm. And um, two of the things that have been rolled out or will be rolled out are Now TV, your over-the-top streaming service, and also Sky Q. Could you talk about the benefits of those two services and how you've implemented them? Well, a, a lot of the, the sort of the old viewer sky, which is, uh, I don't know if it's ever been right, but it's, it's right today, is, is sort of a pure satellite TV company. And that was really how we started. But over that time, we've, uh, we've really tried to broaden how we distribute and, and use that to, to progressively segment all of our markets, to access more customers uh, and to find new ways of getting our content uh, to more and more people. Uh, uh, so, for example, we first got into streaming and over-the-top distribution as far back as 2005. And um, now it was small at the time, but we could identify that as one of the big moving plates, if you like, or trends that was going to happen uh, in our industry. And, of course, on the back of that, 
uh, we learned a lot about the, the, the infrastructure that you need to put together to deliver uh, a very, very robust and reliable system, uh, about how that could open up new segments of the population that we couldn't really get to with mm -hmm. our existing services. And it's grown over time. And then um, about, I guess, two and a bit years ago now, we really t decided that we want to take a much fuller step into over-the-top distribution. And the way that we would do that is through a second brand, mm -hmm. uh, because that would allow us to target it in a very complementary way to what Sky is. So if you think of Sky today as a great service for the family, uh, peace of mind of one bill, all you can eat, free at the point of consumption, a uh, very diverse uh, range of, of, of channels. Now TV is really quite different, uh, more of a pay-as-you-go service. Uh, you're able to basically assemble uh, your own bundle your, uh, yourself. Uh, we, allowed, uh, we, we, we use Now TV to go into um, daily sports passes or weekend sports passes, so really try and change the way that we distribute sport. Uh, and then to target it at, a, at a, a, a group of customers who the truth was we weren't really going to get to with Sky. So you could think of young urbanites, uh, uh, perhaps, who are spending less time or a different stage of life, less time consuming content, probably don't have families yet. Uh, and this was an area that, that we found it a little bit more difficult to get to with the Sky brand. So Now TV got formed on that basis and has grown in a very complementary way <coughs> to, um, uh, to, to Sky. Now, likewise, at the top end, we could see uh, you know, a very valuable uh, part of the market um, who we really wanted to super serve, who essentially just want more and more content. They typically would buy everything. Uh, they spend a lot of time engaged in television, very much a, a, a family uh, service, increasingly want to content, uh, consume their content away from home in, multi in different rooms and, 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 and sort of outside the home as well. And that really led to Sky, Sky Q. Uh, which was to also redefine the top end of our viewing platform uh, that, that for the first time, I think, really anywhere in the world from where I can see, allows customers to get access to all of, their, all of the Sky library of content genuinely at any time uh, or, at, or at any place. And, and so what you now see is you now see a business with a broad range of, of, of platforms. Um, and uh, I think we've now got three of the best platforms uh, and of course, with that, that can really allow us to just get to more and more people uh, over time. And they've all really been led and developed out of the UK. And the nice thing about Sky Europe, of course, is we can take that innovation and we can bring it to Germany and to Italy, you know, at, uh, if not warp speed, a lot, a lot quicker than they would ever have been able to do that themselves. So you can see an immediate benefit uh, from the combined skies uh, by using that innovation across all of those markets more quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, right at the heart of your service in terms of content is Sky Atlantic, your channel for upscale dramas and documentaries. Can you talk about the importance of Sky Atlantic and the type of shows that, that you have brought to that service? Yeah, I mean, Sky Atlantic, again, was, if I, if I tracked back to the, to the genesis of Sky Atlantic, we could, we could see you know, this, this, um, uh, uh, this, you know, this opportunity to, uh, to move more into high-end dramas that we thought was going to really roll out, not just in our market, in, in, in multiple markets. Uh, and we felt there was an opportunity and a gap at the time in the UK uh, for a new channel uh, to, really, to really capture that. And it, we kicked it off initially with uh, a partnership with HBO um, to, um, to get going, and it, and it started to become very, very successful. Uh, from that, uh, we've extended it to, with HBO now, a co-production relationship, which has great renewed our, our agreement with them. Uh, and it allowed us to um, also start to build Sky's own productions uh, on the back of that, and it gave us a vehicle uh, to, um, to broadcast a lot of uh, our increasing slate of drama ourselves. And then finally, we've just extended uh, Sky Atlantic now to now include Showtime. Um, so we've, we've, I think, created you know, one of the best channels anywhere for high-quality drama that I can see in, in, uh, in the world. I think it's increasingly being replicated elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's now a, a channel with agreements that span all of our markets as well, so it's a very much a European uh, channel. Uh, and it's very interesting how it's just grown and been more successful. In fact, today it's, it's regularly uh, quoted as one of the top two reasons to either join, but importantly to stay with Sky. So we know mm -hmm. customers view it. Uh, or value it very, very highly. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really, really important addition to, uh, to what we do, it's been a great success. Right. And uh, I mean, you've also tapped into the, the talent in Germany and in Italy in 
terms of drama, but also uh, other programming. Can you talk a bit about how Germany and Italy play into the, the, the central kind of team? I mean, fundamentally, you know, I think one of the um, one of the great things of um, about bringing the skies together is that is to really try and um, get the best out of each of the markets. Not think of it as sort of the UK going into continental Europe, which is really what it what it isn't. And of course, one of the interesting things uh, when you put together a, a, a merge of that size is often the most valuable ideas come from the smaller businesses today applied in the UK, because that's really where the leverage uh, comes from. So. Um, uh, you know, we're doing um, more and more um, in terms of uh, content creation with Italy and Germany. The quality of, of what uh, is being produced there, I think, is really outstanding. And of course, that, it seems to me that shouldn't really be too much of a surprise to us. You know, the cultural diversity uh, that exists in, in Europe, I mean, everything came from Italy. You know, this is a great opportunity, I think, for a business like ourselves to re really step into that and say if we can bring the best of creativity and professionalism of production and blend that together, that could, I think, lead to some, um, to some really uh, unique stuff uh, for us. So if I look in Germany today, um, 100 Code was the first drama that we produced there. We got off to a decent start with that. We've got Babylon uh, Berlin in production right now. We're doing a great uh, co-production uh, with Canal Plus, actually, mm -hmm. and, uh, and with HBO called The Young Pope in Italy. Um, Gamora will be in its second and then third season. Uh, 1992 has done well in Italy. We've established um, uh, a hub for Sky Arts based in Milan, mm -hmm. uh, and that's just starting to uh, produce some of its first stuff. We've got a great um, program coming up where we're going to find Europe's best photographer mm -hmm. uh, through Sky Art. So you can now just start to see uh, a lot of those little ideas starting to, mm -hmm. starting to come through as the teams accelerate, and I think the outlook um, for a richer, better uh, production business at Sky over the next few years is pretty good. Right. That might be a good moment to show a, a short um, well, collection of clips of Sky shows. So would you like to talk a little bit about the clip, the clip we've sure, got? This, uh, this reel is, uh, focuses on um, some of the dramas that we've, been, uh, we've either been producing as uh, a Sky, but also some of the high-end dramas that are coming from our uh, key partners. It, it, it's not exclusively Atlantic, but tends to major more on the sort of co content that we'd uh, run on Atlantic. And I think it gives you a feel for the sort of aspiration of uh, what we're trying to do in this area. I'd like to talk a little bit about your investments in technology. Uh, I've, you've said before to me that um, you've got an agnostic approach to technology. Could you talk a little bit about that, about your investments in technology companies, especially the Silicon Valley companies? Yeah, I mean, we've never particularly invested deeply in, uh, in infrastructure. We like um, being more fleet of foot, being more agile, um, and the ability, therefore, to move as, as technologies change to where we see the opportunity and where we see consumer trends uh, uh, going. So uh, with the exception of um, our broadband backbone in the UK that we, uh, that we own pretty much, we work with, uh, with, with, with partners. And I think that's worked very well for us. You know, I think we, we very much think of technology as a mechanism uh, to help customers get access to content, get the most value out of uh, the, uh, their subscription, uh, and to really elevate uh, the content investments we're making. So the way I would describe it is if content's the sort of tennis ball Technology is the top spin that we get just to make it bounce a bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, now, as part of that, therefore, um, you know, we're constantly trying to look at what's, you know, what's coming down the pipe and really identify uh, those big trends. And so we spent a lot of time out on the west coast of the States, but, but elsewhere in Europe, uh, working with startups or, or you know, the, the Silicon Valley giants um, to you know, understand where you know, their business priorities are, where they're going, how we can work with them. Uh, often for a lot of the smaller businesses who tend to be very focused on the U.S. domestic market, uh, you know, we're a good partner for them in, in, uh, in Europe. Um, and then it's also good to work with disruptors, to mm -hmm. work with the businesses that are trying to disrupt and dismantle our business model. Um, because, you know, we need to understand those things if we're going to think about how we position ourselves over the future. So it's been a very um, rich and rewarding um, set of uh, activities, actually, there. And uh, I think we'll do more and more of that over the, the next few years. And, and I understand that because of this agnostic approach to technology, you're able to move into new territories when the opportunity arises, because you don't mind too much about how people consume your content as long as they're consuming your content? 
Yeah, look, I think, you know, I, I would observe that a lot of businesses, uh, I think, sometimes broadcast businesses and, and often a lot of technology businesses, they get a little bit too hung up about the industry. Uh, and, you know, we really try and start with customers. You know, we think about what's the best way to uh, deliver for customers today or deliver for customers uh, in, in the future. And once we're clear on that, we can then start to put in place the pieces of the jigsaw that we need to have in place. And I think mm -hmm. if you start there, you know, you end up in a good place. If you start with a delivery mechanism, that's not necessarily going to going to uh, to work. So um, that's uh, you know, that's our approach. Now, if you take something like over-the-top distribution, for example, you know, we've I think uh, understood very clearly you know what the sort of things you need to have in place to deliver a robust service, particularly if you're going to think about delivering something like live sport where you can have very significant contention and big peaks of demand. Uh, and actually, we've got to a point now where our over-the-top service is almost as reliable as the satellite service. And, uh, and therefore, with that, it then really starts to become a credible way, potentially, to get into some new markets. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. And I'd just like to welcome back on stage Jerome. And we shall now be able to give you your award. <laughs> Thank you very much for that interview speech. Congratulations. Yeah, we great. Thank you. So on behalf of Variety, uh, we would like to give you the award for Variety's achievement in an international television award. Yep, now.